Welcome to the Porsche Club Insider, your one stop for all things Porsche and PCA. Here's your host, Vu Gwynn, and the Insider Crew. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 100. I can't believe it. The 100th episode. I guess we got to start this off with first uh, introducing the, the crew that's at the table. We've got we've got Damon, we've got Rob, we've got Manny, and of course, Robert, the OG group. And, you know, I really want to start by saying thank you um, to Manny. Uh, you know, you're the one that has the longest commute. You're the one that's mostly into podcasts and had a vision for this and then Robert for being able to stitch all of the things that we do together. Um, thank you guys. This has been an incredible journey and uh, I know we'll talk a bit about Daytona later, but I can't tell you how many folks came up to me and thanked us for doing this. Yeah, I think Robert, uh, he's done something here because he deserves so much credit for producing and making the YouTube version so, um, uh, want to watch uh, I've had people tell me they started off listening to us but then they started watching the YouTube and because the YouTube offers so much more they just switched over to watching it now on uh, on YouTube and that's not the case with a lot of podcasts a lot of podcasts uh, only the YouTube version is either uh, a picture with the with the podcast playing or it's just a camera showing the people talking where uh, we uh, tend to like to take the production value a little bit higher can you allow me to boast a little bit Sure. Um, so obviously I, I look at the metrics for the podcast. Um, I look at the metrics on YouTube. Now, interestingly enough, like when you do measurements uh, against other podcasts out there, how we're doing in the world, it doesn't take into account the number of views that are on YouTube, which, you know, it could be anywhere between two, 3,000 to 10,000 um, because uh, how, how great of a job Robert does and so many people want to watch it on uh, YouTube. but. Even without the YouTube counts, it's amazing how high our show has been ranked. And I, you know, I'm really appreciative of that. I was really tickled pink when I, I, I looked at some rankings uh, in the automotive area. In South Korea, PCA is the number two <laughs> podcast in automotive and number oh, nice. three in Taiwan. <laughs> oh, there we go. Well, we're cornering Around, the Asian market. I like, you know, <laughs> we, we, you know, we have no idea how far reaching uh, this stuff goes, but it, it goes out there. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So uh, quickly, last week, uh, we know I was in Daytona, so I'll, I'll reserve my stuff. Uh, I do have a little thing for you, uh, some trivia, um, but let's start with Rob. How was your week? My week was great. Spent a lot of time in the new to me Cayenne. I've put almost 4,000 miles on it in a little over a month. Oh, wow. I mean, you are such a driver. Hey, don't That's put awesome. too many miles on my future Cayenne. Yeah. <laughs> While you weren't here, we were talking about who gets dibs on that car. It is so <laughs> not, you know, one of the, the next time I'll bring it here, but it has just been so comfortable, so smooth. Um, you know, the fuel economy is not wonderful, but the tank's enormous. So at least the range is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so you get, do you get 300 miles per tank? Uh, I get closer to 380, 390. Whoa, that. that's so much more than mine. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, I, I mean, I'm averaging about 20 to 21 on the highway. So Whoa, that's a lot better that's, than mine. That's pretty good. Is it really? I mean, yeah, I think so. That's so really the, good. Like you said, when that car came out, I thought it was going to have phenomenal uh, fuel economy. Then we saw that it wasn't that much different than the uh, V8. Yeah. Uh, so I would think 21 for that. So is that all highway driving that you're good? talking it's about? It's mostly highway driving. Oh, okay. yeah. I mean, in town... I don't do that much in town driving. Yeah. I take my kids to school and you know go to the grocery store and stuff like that. I mean, I would guess in town, it's probably closer to sixteen. Okay, because I was about to say in yeah. town, I get like fifteen. Yeah, most yeah. of my it's probably is in sixteen. Town. You know, sixteen highway. around. Okay, town, so highway at three eighty. Okay. Yeah. No, it's not bad. You're not. You don't have a switch over to kilometers when you're in Canada. You're I do. Not, you're not counting kilometers. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> I do switch. I do switch the route to, to kilometers in Canada. But you know, I do find that if I you know, if I fill it to the brim, uh, you know, before I go over the border, I can do most of my driving in Canada on U.S. gas and, and uh, when I get out of Canada. Because um, it's a lot more expensive in Canada. It is. It's like, uh, it's like California money in Canada, basically. You so know, it comes mm -hmm. out to like $5 what a have you, US. What have you done to the car since you bought it? 
Uh, I did a water pump uh, before I took delivery of oh. it. Uh, put some Pirelli, um, not Scorpions, whatever the Pirelli winters mm-hmm. are. So, so zero, zero. Yeah. Yeah. probably. Yeah, on it, and it's it's a beast. I mean, I don't nobody. I don't think you guys have seen the driveway uh, that I have at home, but I mean, it's fifty yards, and it's probably like a twenty percent grade. I mean, oh. it's a crazy steep driveway, and. You know, surprise living in northern Michigan, sometimes when you get home, when you've been away for a while, it's snowed and there's no, you know, there are no magic gnomes who snowblow your driveway. So, um, you know, it uh, it claws its way up that driveway just fine on, on plowed snow. Yeah, it's, Cayenne it's with winter tires is pretty much unstoppable. Yeah. I've gone through some crazy deep stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, there are times I'm like, why am I bothering snow blowing my driveway? The thing's going to get up and down. It's just fine. <laughs> so I just took advantage of the uh, PCA discount at Pelican Parts and ordered the stuff I need for my water pump change in my E1 Cayenne. So uh-huh. I got a uh, new water pump, new seals. I figured I'll replace the serpentine belt. And because you have to take off all the air boxes and stuff, I bought... Uh, uh, two new air filters so yeah well you know the one thing coming up that we should think about doing is um you know it's an 05 and for whatever reason uh 05 i think is the only year that's kind of afflicted with this is the the solenoids and the transmission valve bodies uh go and you get these kind of jerky hard downshifts um hmm. it's a relatively easy fix but it's something that I'd like to do because it just is kind of annoying. It's an otherwise. Does that trip really a check engine light though? No. no. So you just you just feel it when you're yeah. coming to like a light or something. You know. Uh yeah the like the I guess the two to one you know when you're coming to a light you feel it and you know if you does it go down to one a lot? Mine hardly ever goes into one. Uh, maybe it's three to two. I don't oh, know. Okay. I assume whatever whatever yeah. you know whatever the downshift is going yeah. to uh, the light. Yeah, you know you'll occasionally feel that, and you know. So Rob's you... Rob's gonna get his hands dirty and do this. Swap. Like, it's try, supposed to be actually pretty why don't easy. Why you try to flow it first before you it did? And, uh, yeah. No, I mean it's it's the valve body solenoids. Mm. I mean it, it it needs to be done. Didn't you do that in your other E one? I did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I had somebody else do it. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I understand it's relatively. DIY friendly to do so. the uh, the Cayenne <laughs> Service Center here in the next week. Yeah, or exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Damon, but I mean, how... otherwise it's such a smooth, yeah. great. You know, we're planning to do um, Boo's water pump on his car actually. Yeah. As well. Oh, I don't okay. Know if you knew, yeah. so that, that's why I say that. Oh, we're fun. Have some Cayennes coming through. Yeah, and you did. The, you've already done the the coolant overflow tank, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was like a there's half a, hour. There's a YouTube video on it. I, I know. Exactly. I I saw it. Damon, how about you? Uh, yeah, I ended up going to the Washington DC auto show. I haven't been to an auto show on a public day in quite a long time. And I'm not quite sure if this is how they usually are, but I have a few videos and some photos and you had some, you know, people driving electric cars inside. And I I think those were employees giving rides. I sure hope they weren't just customers driving these things on this course. Um, You know, it had Hyundai Ionic fives in there and it was kind of funny so watching the kids on the uh the sim rigs here's one it, it's a ford off-road like raptor experience or something if you're watching youtube and the whole thing is moving around here if you're watching on youtube there's a little probably five-year-old playing i racing mm-hmm. and he cannot keep it on the road Aww. and the uh the worker there was trying to like before this video started she was like no no go here go there go here it's, it's and then, tough to teach a kid and then yeah. she just you'll see in a second she just gives up and walks away Aww. and lets him crash yeah, into the yeah, wall because they go either off you know full throttle yeah. or no throttle right yeah so. So it was um, a cool auto show there. Porsche wasn't there. VW wasn't there. Audi wasn't there. There was a lot of manufacturers missing, but there... So Ford was there. Who else was there? Ford was there. Um, Nissan, Toyota. Um, GM was there. You know, McLaren. But I think some of these are dealerships who bring cars. Okay. So it, it was still a pretty full show and had a lot of cool cars. And if you go downstairs, there were some, some old Ferraris. And I think the... Capital Mustang Club brings a ton of Mustangs there, and there's a nice Fox, Celine Fox body there yeah. that I, I took a picture of. Um, I think we're witnessing the death, the demise of the auto of, show. Of auto yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. what got me, and it was busy. I don't really like 
really busy places, which is why I don't tend to go, but I like going with friends. Mm -hmm. Um, But there was one guy, there were two Toyota GR Corollas, Mm -hmm. and I'm like, I want to sit in one. So in one GR Corolla, there was a little maybe four-year-old crawling around the driver's seat for like 10 minutes or something. Mm -hmm. Just would not get out. Parents were not there to say, hey, you know, let other people sit in the car. So I look over at the other GR Corolla, and then... I see a, a head sitting in the um, driver's seat and um, he had been there, I think, for like five or ten minutes and people were waiting um, to get in there and they walked away and now I'm waiting with Anthony uh-huh. and we're there for four or five minutes and I'm like, excuse me, sir, do you mind if I get maybe a minute sitting in the, uh, or if we get a minute sitting in the driver's seat, please? Uh-huh. Ignored me. Um, excuse me, sir, can I have a minute in there ignored me <laughs> sir are you going to ignore me ignored me so that was the brawl that was on the news at the dc auto show <laughs> i came I, my blood's boiling right now Grab the kid by the scruff of the neck at that I, point I, th- this was a grown adult oh, an adult the kid was fine i'm just like oh, you know okay. he doesn't know any better but this one dude was in sits in there for 10 15 minutes was taking he photos than, was he bigger than you because i have to assess that I have to say, will this guy beat the crap out of me? I probably could have took him, <laughs> yeah. but no, no, it was not that. No, it was just, oh my god. So yeah, it, it was a good so, experience, but so did he ever get me, out? No, he never did. Not not until you know, like half an hour later, and it was open. We just so here, here, here's the thing that one welcome to public day, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. I think you, right. we we are fortunate <laughs> where we've been able to get in early at shows and stuff, but yeah, that's the world now. And the thing is, they're not necessarily sitting down to just get a feel for the car for no, themselves, but they're doing YouTube they're, they're doing like there. a YouTube video, right? So they're trying to. You know, make sure they have something good to post. Was he later. filming a YouTube video? It I don't know. He been. had his camera out the whole time. Yeah. yeah and I he was you. just taking pictures you. and I think probably video and just totally ignored everybody yeah. who went, was trying to sit in that car. And That's then... the polite Californian in you, though. I mean, you know, <laughs> man, he would have been just like, get the F out now. <laughs> Yeah, no, my blood was boiling. Yeah. If he had gotten out, um, but nobody can tell your blood person, was boiling. But... <laughs> it's like you know, it's it would have like... been like PCA digital media coordinator <laughs> assaults man in well, Toyota GR you, Corolla. Thank you for making the right yeah, choice and not starting a fight or getting into a fight. I right. don't start fights. So yeah. It's not my thing. But anyway, that that's what I did. Manny. <laughs> I was just thinking I make sure I, I could outrun the person too. <laughs> just in case. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> you plan all this ahead of time. Yes. Um it was a beautiful day on Saturday up here in Maryland. Um it was actually better on Friday. Actually. Friday was like seventy degrees. I drove home from here with my top down on my Z three. It was uh Oh, la di da. <laughs> you jealous? Yes. <laughs> a little bit. Mr. I live in the tundra. Yeah. <laughs> Although I was in Costa Rica for oh, a that's week. True. So. That's no true. one yeah. told you to make Santa Claus your neighbor. That was your choice. <laughs> so uh, then Saturday we did Cars and Coffee. We got to hang out outside because mm. it was a... Uh, was a good showing? Yeah, there was, nice. was a lot of Porsches there. Yeah. And then when I got home, I was able to exercise all the cars. But I, took I the thought you were going to end with that. Well, I was just, a nice day. I was just going to go out and exercise. No. Really? <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh. Let's, get a, mirror. Let's get a mirror in here. Exercise the cars. Uh-huh. Got it. Got uh-huh. it. Got it. So, got yeah, it. We got the, I get to exercise the cars. I never liked the storm for the winter. But, uh, and the roads I, were clean. <clears throat> yeah, the down. roads were clean of yeah. salt. It was uh, perfect to take the 914 and 964 out for some oh, drives. Oh, and nice. everything turned on. Everything turned on with no problem, ran nice. with no problem. So that's Of course, a, we all know that Vu exercised his 914. This week, oh, no, Dad, why you got to go there? It's a <laughs> career limiting comment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you guys know what I did because we're going to talk about Daytona later. But I have something for you because sometimes, you know, we see a lot of cars, and um, Robert, don't show, don't show the caliper just yet. But I'm going to play this thing called the caliper game. Um, we see a lot of Porsches, we see a lot of color options, this, that, and the other, and calipers are pretty standard. Um, so let me just start with when you see a green. A Porsche caliper, you know it's a hybrid. hybrid. All mm-hmm. right. You see a red caliper. I am this turbo. You see a black caliper. Oh yeah, it's base model base. iron disc. Yeah. Red and black iron disc. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you see yellow calipers. PCCB. You see white calipers. That's PSCB. That, uh, yeah. The mirror one. I keep on forgetting the acronym for it. Uh, Porsche surface coated brakes yes. with yes. the tungsten yes. carbide. Yes. So yeah. I'm looking at this beautiful vehicle on the lot and i noticed it looked very oem but robert show the color of this one it was like a matte gray caliper 
Ever seen that color on a Porsche? No, I don't think so. No. It stumped me. I'm like, huh, a matte gray caliper in the car. You know, you can get your caliper yeah, you painted can. to match your car. I, I understand that, but this car was a bone stock looking Cayenne. And really, how many Cayenne owners paint their calipers, uh, paint a sample, right? So yeah. inquiring minds want to know um, any guesses. If you have any guesses, guess now down in the comments. But turns out uh, I checked with my buddy Michael Tam for E3 Cayenne base model. Um, and I believe some S's with the standard brakes uh, you could get that color i had That's, no idea that color is gray it it's great. well yeah actually me. what color does it look yeah, like it's to gray you? to me yeah, yeah it's like a yeah. matte gray i've never seen it but i have to confess i'm not generally checking out the calipers and base cayennes i look but, at everything I yeah mean, it was a beautiful car so um and i've also seen i've seen silver calipers on porsches too but i've never seen this matte matte gray hmm. interesting huh yeah it is i i don't know if i'd go gray it kind of blends in or yeah, it's definitely. kind of like when you're wearing like black and navy blue together, and it's like you know. Oh. I was in my say, opinion, it's I, like typical Porsche. It's like when they make sell their shirts that are black tone on tone, and then they have black uh, script that says Porsche on it. Yeah, 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 that's what they would do. Yeah. So, anyways, little factoid there: they did make matte gray um, calipers OEM. So, yeah. All right, uh, we were. We'll, we'll talk about the raffle next week because we've got so much to go over. But uh, that was on Wednesday. No, was it Wednesday morning? Yeah, Wednesday morning we were getting on the road super early, but at the same time they were getting ready to do the special launch on YouTube for the Macan EV. Um, I'll let you kick it off, Manny, with what we thought of it. Well, you know, we've been showing uh, showing um, spy photos of it, and uh, they actually released photos a little bit before, uh, a couple days before the debut, and we sh actually the um, debut was on the. Was it no Thursday or Friday? It was Wednesday. 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 Yep. Wednesday. All right. Wednesday um, at like six thirty a.m. Eastern. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was so right we, in the car. So we recorded the podcast on Tuesday, I think. Didn't we? we did. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's right. what it was. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And anyways, um, so it came out much to the, the look of the uh, drawings that they had, and I think it's uh, I think it looks great. It doesn't look like necessarily electric electric car like sometimes the manufacturers will on purpose make it look like a, a different car. I think it keeps in with the lines of the family. A little Taycan look to it. Uh, definitely, you can see the Porsche um, bloodline in it. Um, yeah, the range is uh, impressive. Um, I wish it was a little cheaper, but that's the price of uh, Macans now. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna agree with you. It looks to me they did a fantastic job with the design of it. I'm I'm interested to see how. I know this the the electric version will be more expensive than the ICE version, which will be sold you know side by side with it but man the exterior is good looking yeah. the interior is good looking the performance the performance stats. is crazy so if yeah. you have the infrastructure so to speak if you can charge um your car at home and you have you know it meets your mileage needs on a daily basis yeah man that's gonna be i don't know see, I, I, we asked this question before like how many people do you think are gonna buy the new e-version versus sticking with the ice version and then I, I hope that we will see people bring this out to say like an autocross because I you know I I've said it before it just you know it irks me to no end when like a Model Three comes out and just spanks the field for a lot of cars just because the torque and the power it has it's gonna be nice to see how well these Macans do six hundred and thirty horsepower yeah zero to sixty in three point three seconds that's that's yeah, come on that's so crazy that's nuts yeah. those are look yeah. i mean 10 years ago those were like super, hypercar the, numbers those are supercar hypercar numbers yeah, from yeah. not too long ago yeah um so the, the 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 silly question that came up as as they were doing this announcement is they're still hanging on to turbo yeah <laughs> well, i called that i think i even yeah said we, it on the we all said it's a yeah. trim line it's a yeah. trim level they said now, that folks. when the macan came out yeah, it's, it's a, a trim, trim line level. Yeah. don't yeah. get hung up with why are they calling it turbo when it has no turbo it's a trim line because you could to go in backwards and say well how come they're not calling uh, all macans turbos because they're all turbocharged yeah but you know we learned that when the macan came out that they only called the top of the line the turbo with the gas engines and they continued it one of the things that was revealed in the um the the announcement there was the drag coefficient of that car 0 is 0 0.25 0 0.25 and i i was uh to, to illustrate the point 
we all know Boggs drives a uh, C6 Corvette, mm-hmm, C6, which yeah. you look at a C6 Corvette and it is slick, right? It Not almost, a Z06, but a C6. A C6, a yeah, C6. A regular and I, and I, I told him, because I knew the number, I was like, Boggs, do you realize this <laughs> SUV has a drag coefficient that is better than your C6. He's like, no way, that's not even possible. My car is like a wedge and da 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 da. <laughs> and he looked it up and it, I think that it was like uh, uh, two, 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 six. Zero point two five for the Macan. Two, oh, oh, for two, the, for two the, five for a Macan, but I think the C6 was like two, um, two six or two seven. Is the C6 actually more slippery than a C7? Um, that, I don't I don't, that I don't know. Zero point two eight for the wow. zero point two eight for a C six, which is still imagine? very good. That's crazy. That's, it's a good, it's good because I mean I think that's even better than like a nine nine two nine eleven I believe. Yeah. But how does how does an sure. SUV become that slippery? And because it's that slippery, they said that added like eighty five kilometers of range purely because of its aerodynamics. That's amazing. Just right? the feeling you can coast forever. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, so uh, I did find it interesting, and maybe you, you have some theory on this. So the the launch was super early for us, six thirty, yeah. and it was, it was in, like in Singapore or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. in Singapore. Yeah, but for like the first what half an hour. Yeah, there it was, was nothing. It was, <laughs> it was like filler. nothing about the car. It was about the statue or the whatever the artist. And yeah, is that to like hook people? I don't know. That's what, what do you I was think? thinking. Yeah, I think Dame. We talked about this on a ride up. Yeah. And I think uh, Damon was point, spot on. Yeah. At, if you if you percentage. start off with the the main event on a live video, there are how many people watching? Oh, uh, so you the know, wait so you give it. it more time and more people are. And, and it was it was like twelve thousand people watching. You know, at ten minutes or something, and it was mm-hmm. seventeen thousand five ten minutes later. So, so yeah. they're letting the um, yeah, that's the, what I think. The audience grow before they really. Yeah. Well, it. I mean, having been in the right seat of it, uh, what about two months ago? You know, a lot of people talk about electric cars lacking soul i mean the visceral thrills of of the 630 horsepower you know turbo the top of the line car it really it absolutely did, did you delivers. get to ride in the macan 4 no yeah so no, we got to ride in the, the turbo what, top. Yeah, yeah later obviously called but the turbo i mean even the macan 4 is what 430 horsepower yeah it's zero in to 60 range, in like the high fives yeah, you're not gonna like, be lacking i was about anything. to say like right that's to me, I think that's plenty for the yeah, street. Four thirty, right? 30? Right, but three point three seconds. I mean, that's oh. just yeah, it's nuts. And how was the fit and finish? Well, it was a pre-production model. It was pre-production. There were things yeah. that were covered up, and yeah. and uh, and does it have uh, does see. it have like a low speed sound? Like I see these uh, Civic, not Civic, um, CRV hybrids when they're just like in like parking lot mode, they make like a weird noise. Does it yeah. also make a noise? Hmm. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. And then, and then, in Germany, like that's it for them. Like this will be the next Macan. Yeah, of have... all things, it's cybersecurity. It's not emissions related. It's cybersecurity regulations that are preventing them from continuing to sell the, the ice Macan. Like, what is what is that cybersecurity? I don't know. Watch the movie Leave the World Behind with oh, all the yeah. driverless Teslas. I think it's something. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, so, it's so. going to prevent people from breaking breaking into the cars. Yeah. Uh, and, and gives them more control, uh, allows them to uh, download um, uh, updates on it uh, differently. It's uh, so they're, they're they would have had to change so many things with the the, the existing the, car. The, yeah, with the existing car that it just wasn't yeah. practical. I think to... the timing they thought they wouldn't be building ice cars, uh... so why invest in the ice car? Um, into a uh, cybersecurity level. I see. When it wasn't Makes necessary, when going but away, then yeah. as things worked out, they realized, you know what, we can still sell the ice car. Yeah. So. Back to that movie you just mentioned. Yeah. I can't. I wish I could get my two hours or whatever part of my life back. That was a terrible movie. Really, I yeah. didn't watch. I, the only thing I've seen the the trailer and I've seen the you know the, oh, the driverless Tesla scene. Yeah. But, yeah. What, what is this movie? Uh, it's like at the end of the world. The, this um, uh, this family goes out uh, to like an Airbnb, and then the world just kind of comes to an end, and it's like uh, digital terrorism. He didn't like, like it because there's no dance numbers, in it, no music, <laughs> later lose. Wasn't step up. <laughs> Julia Roberts. I'm a huge Julia Roberts fan, and that's probably what pulled me into watching it. But it was such oh my, it just dragged and dragged yeah. and computers and uh, and Tesla started uh, you know driving down the highway by themselves and I, just, it was, it was <laughs> I don't know I didn't see it the already movie. happens it's almost like if the <laughs> no. next war wouldn't be with the bomb being dropped yeah but it's all cybersecurity it's all cybersecurity yeah. I mean that's what they're talking about not to get into the whole world of politics but that 
yeah. but they're talking about the retaliation yeah. Yeah. against Iran is not dropping bombs, but hitting on cybersecurity. Yeah. yeah. So it, the storyline seemed a lot more interesting than the actual execution of the movie. But that's just me. Yeah. Well, I mean the the trailer and the scenes that that you know Netflix have dropped. You know, some of those are legitimately like the with that container ship that mm-hmm. basically rammed yeah, the yeah, beach. Yeah. And the scene with all the driverless Teslas, that stuff is legitimately scary to, to watch, at least in, in Man, little it, chunks. It, it looks so Hollywood. Come on. It look, it is. This from the guy who loves Fast and Furious. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> There's some things. They wrecked I, a lot of Teslas. There are some things I will accept. There is that. There's others that I will not. Um, anyways. I will say that uh, since we're talking about movies, yeah. uh, last night I got hooked onto watching. Uh, the new Netflix, uh, I guess it's NASCAR's answer to Drive to Survive. Oh, I saw it. Came it's out. called uh, Full Speed. Mm-hmm. Basically, same uh, recipe as um, as Drive to Survive. You know, they highlight the cer- certain drivers and they follow them. And uh, and I thought ah, I'm going to watch this for like ten minutes and I'll probably yeah. get bored of it. I felt myself on the fourth episode before I said I got to go to bed. Yeah. It's, it's past midnight. <laughs> and I got to wake up early tomorrow. Oh, that was good. Um, very well done. Nice. Um, and uh, they get once again just like uh, try to survive. They get a lot of access to the meetings, and it, it's not a G-rated show. You hear the drivers dropping f bombs while they're driving, and it's uh, all the stuff we can't do. Yes, yes. exactly. <laughs> We're still G-rated. We're still G-rated, uh, but it's very well. Uh, uh, very well produced. I think they're going to get a lot more fans, which I'm sure is why they want to do it. Because they lost, the whole idea. they've lost a lot of fans. Mm-hmm. I think they'll uh, get uh, more to casual people um, to uh, to watch it. Mm, cool. Um, Makani V's. I think will probably be seen summertime, and then in dealers later this year. Yeah, I'm, my guess is the. I mean, they've they've already let certain journalists from certain outlets drive it, but mm-hmm. I think the. Um, you know, the big first drives are probably going to take place in the spring, and yeah. then they'll start showing dealerships late in the summer, I yeah. guess. Mm. And we won't have one at uh, Tech Tactics East. Yeah, um, not ready. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, even the people who train the technicians haven't seen that car yet, yeah. so but, they haven't even seen the ST. So yeah. it's what about not the like Raid? A, uh, I bet you that's a tough order, too. Mm, I think... I think... By parade, which is June, right? By June, they will have some in probably their demonstrator marketing fleet. Not to drive, but probably to the press fleet. Press fleet, right? Yeah. I well, so. I mean, if they're in the let's, press let's fleet, let's cross our fingers that we maybe we we'll see one. In. We we see one at parade. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. That would be. Mm-hmm. All right. Before we get into Daytona, I just want to remind everyone uh, to please like and subscribe and. Uh, as we're as you're listening to this, if you're watching it uh, on YouTube and you comment, we love reading your comments as well. Uh, we'll throw up the newsletters. If you uh, are not receiving eBreak news, PCA's Mark Fresh news or performance news, head over to PCA.org and sign up. Well, let's move into Daytona. Uh, super exciting! I was fortunate enough to head down there with our national president Aaron Ambrosino on Friday. Got there late Friday evening. Was there for all day Saturday. And, and how much of the race do you watch when you go down there? Here's here's the reality, <laughs> folks. Here's the reality. <laughs> it sounds amazing that I got to go to Daytona. Um, and I, hang out in the hospitality and hang suite. out And hang out in the hospitality Get suites. chauffeured around. But go ahead. Yep. yep. So I land there. Uh, we got to the hotel probably around 1130 midnight. Saturday morning, we were at uh, Corral setting up at 630 in the morning. I was there until about noon, and then I went into meetings. Uh, the good news is I got to meet some really great folks, which I'll mention in a bit, but pretty much meetings all day. So how Saturday. much of the race did you get to watch? I probably watched the start for maybe two or three minutes. Um, during the course of the day, a couple of minutes. On Sunday, before I left for the airport, I left right before the last hour and yeah because nothing happened in the last yeah. hour so you didn't miss anything <laughs> yeah so yeah the reality is i go to something like this we were very productive but as far as watching racing i if i saw 10 minutes of the race that's a lot yeah i remember i used when i used to go uh when i was on ec you would sneak peeks out of the tent through the fence yeah. from far away to see a little bit of the race or you watched it on the tv inside the tent while you were waiting yeah. uh for either make a presentation or, or watch one um so 
Yeah. Yeah. But that's but why yeah. I got to watch like seven hours of it this yeah. weekend on TV. So, you know, yeah, don't, I'm not crying because honestly, it's, it's awesome to it be there. It was freaking 70 some degrees down yeah, there. It was, which it is was rare. <laughs> it was, and it's usually cold and rainy. It was, uh, yeah. you know, you know, mostly good weather, but just seeing our members, uh, being able to help out with the volunteers. Um, shout out to Leslie Sikorsky. Shout out to Lynn Friedman, who are the who are the ones leading uh, the corral and setup. Uh, all the volunteers from Zone Twelve, uh, Porsche of Melbourne, who provided lunch on on Sunday. There's so many people there to make the corral happen and that's kind of what the, i'm there to support you know michelin came out and did talks drivers came out um people got uh, you know pit tours and stuff like that that's what i'm there for and you know just catching up with people there's so many people i i will um if you can throw up the manny fan robert there was a gentleman he was really cute his name is angel don uh, andrew donaldson um he was, you know, uh, just sharing how much of a fan of the podcast and YouTube he is. But he said, do you know, I was at Road America in 2009. And I don't know if you remember him, Manny, mm-hmm. but uh, he's yep. like, Manny was so nice to give me a parade lap in his 964. And so I took that picture of uh, oh, cool. your fan there. And there is so many incidents where instance where people were just, you know, just happy to see us out there and like, oh, you know, I know you talk about stuff and where you go, but here I get to see you in person. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So as far as meetings, uh, the big one was getting to meet the new CEO of Porsche Cars North America. Uh, he was once at AG, um, then with Audi, and more recently with BMW Motorrad, and that is Timo Resch, and had a great hour and a half with him. I feel like... Which is a lot for a CEO oh yeah. Are you kidding Porsche. Me? Are you kidding me? At an event like this, yeah. an hour and a half Spend, is like a lifetime. Spend, spending yeah. an hour and a half with the club. Um, yeah, it uh, it, was, it was great. I, I feel like, um, you know, he is definitely a enthusiast. He's been in the PCA world before. He knows us very well. He started talking about our top line you know, initiatives and such. Uh, we got to spend time with, of course, you know, Kathy Lee, uh, our, our main contact at Porsche Cars North America. But we spent time with her her boss as well, Philip Mountie, and uh, talking about some, some we have a content meeting here at PCA National Headquarters every, every week and uh, trying to get access to certain things. And I think Philip came up with a very uh, unique solution to things. And we're going to look into it and I'll share with the rest of the team there. But that what that means is there's going to be more stuff that we're going to be able to bring via YouTube or impressions on the podcast, uh, ultimately more uh, content for the members. Good articles, hopefully. Yeah, our articles, of course. And um, our, our dear friend, uh, Michael Tam, who was actually there on his own nickel because he didn't have a official role at the at the Rolex. He drove down and hung out with us as well. So uh, got uh, to see some other folks in motorsport. And uh, when we talk about the behind the scenes of the Brad Pitt stuff, I'll share that. But I think you should probably start with why this uh, Daytona was so important to Porsche. Well, obviously, uh, Daytona is always important to Porsche, uh, but this uh, was one of the rare times they're going for overall win, uh, which uh, for a long time they were just going for class wins and GT class. Um, This is a factory effort, uh, and um, especially the last year, which was kind of a disappointment because everyone's hopes were high. They had so much testing on this platform. Uh, They were cautiously uh, optimistic, but, you know, the results were less than what we had hoped for. Um, but based on uh, the roar, which is a week before the qualifying, and certainly near the end of last season, uh, I, I knew there was a lot of hope that they were going to do well. But a 24-hour race is just that. It's 24 hours. And while the cars now are so much more reliable than they were 20 years ago, um, it doesn't take the human element out of it. And uh, one mistake can ruin your, your race immediately. And that's what happened to Team Lexus early on. I think in the first hour, uh, one of the LMP2 cars got loose right in front of Team Lexus, and the driver had nowhere to go but the broadside this guy. And it they got the car fixed, but they were down a lot of laps. So that was my worst fear is that you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, and as good as your car is, as good as your drivers are, uh, it can just take you out of a race. And when you're talking about, uh, I looked at it like um, 12 hours into the race, and they were still like one second between first and second, which is just, when you think about the stress they must have been under, 
That means you cannot make any mistakes. Oh, speaking of mistakes, this uh, the, the the bit of racing that I did watch it was. Did you guys watch when that BMW and the front uh, uh, passenger caliper switch? They had to. They had a brake issue. Did you see that? They swapped the caliper yeah, so in like oh, forty yeah. seconds. So they swapped a caliper and rotor as a one piece unit. Yeah, I saw yeah. that. And yeah, it took like thirty or forty seconds. And then they couldn't get the the lug nut on. Like they somehow stripped the lug nut on, and then they went out and I guess it didn't seat right. And I don't know if the ABS was messed up. Mm. But man, I was like, oh, I can imagine the pressure of that poor, you know. Your wheel guy, you know, that's doing yeah. all that. Yeah, because, oh. I mean, the actual change was really quick, right? I mean, it was like 30 or 40 yeah, seconds. Yeah, you could tell they had that, practiced yeah. this before. Yeah. Yeah. They weren't saying, I think I can do this. Yeah. <laughs> but I would like to know the technology. How are you able to swap a caliper and not bleed it? I was just thinking that, too. Right? There's got to be some system um, in there because you know you see in these cars they have like a quick eject like a or dry release or something that uh, for, for all the fluid. Oh. So maybe there's a similar thing for brakes. Uh, for, I uh, remember we saw Audi back uh, over a decade ago, I think, uh, uh, when they were doing a whole rear end assembly. Mm-hmm. They did it instead of like uh, changing out transmission parts or anything. They just but I can I can, I can understand rear end because it's you know fluids and stuff are might be contained in the whole unit and like the drive shaft is the mechanical part there's nothing there to but i think that was brake calipers and everything what i remember seeing it had the wheels oh attached. it did yeah oh, it had everything attached. well yeah but but how do you get the brake fluid you know again same, well i'm same saying problem it, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, i'm sure there's a there, there must be so it. if it's, anyone it's listening knows yeah. how they do this i really would love to learn that technology because i think that's pretty cool yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was uh it, for me it was it was such Unlike my Ravens, who let me down after the race. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I felt for you, Manny. I was watching that on the plane, and I could hear the sighs from my family, uh, even though I was in the plane. That was that was uh, so my but, condolences. But, uh, that I, I congratulate the Chiefs. They simply outplayed us. Yeah. There was no uh, no argument, no no fix yeah. to see Taylor Swift in the Super Bowl. We just uh, <laughs> yeah. we just played sucky. But um, anyways, as I was watching the twenty four hour race, I thought, oh my god, you know, it's less as they're getting down to the end. He only had like a second and a half lead over the Cadillac, and once again, you you misjudge uh, slower traffic. So much can Anything go wrong. Can happen. Yeah. So I'm going to say spoiler alert because I'm curious. So if you're listening and you didn't see it and you want to watch it for yourself, spoiler alert. But uh, I, I didn't get to see the last part, and you were mentioning um, sort of the key part with regards to a pit stop. I think the last pit stop was so critical because. Uh, the Porsche came out in front of the Cadillac, and you would have thought uh, if they were putting in the same amount of fuel, the Cadillac would come out first. Mm-hmm. And as soon as the Porsche came out first, and we we're talking like a millisecond in front of the Cadillac, mm. um, the you know, announcer said they didn't have to put as much fuel in, which means they were strategizing and for this exact moment when it would be needed. Because uh, while the Cadillac was only a few feet behind us coming out of the pits. Pass, get, catching up to somebody is one thing. Passing them is another thing. Right. And, uh, Especially that if was, they're driving defensively, Oh, sure. Right? Yeah, yeah, this is made because he was using um, Philippe Nasser, who was a, a Porsche driver for the last stint. He was using uh, slower traffic as best as he could mm-hmm. to try to build a little bit of a lead. Um, but, yeah, uh, kudos to Team Penske. Obviously, uh, they know what they're doing. I'm glad that Roger Penske was there to witness it. Yeah. Um, it had been since 1969 wow. was the last time he won in a Lola, I believe, uh, um, yeah, like and I saw a picture of the 69 pits, uh-huh. and it was almost comical because they had pieces of plywood where they looked like they handmade a uh, a little platform for the timing and scoring people to sit up above. And there's maybe three or four people in the pits and compared to what it is now where it's uh, this gigantic team, and they've got computer monitors everywhere. It's a whole uh, setup that was a lot different from... Uh, Obviously, from sixty nine. Yeah, didn't he turn eighty seven? Like something. Oh, he is, race. Oh, I mean, wow, yeah, he is completely with it. He, yeah, um, amazing. Good for him. Yeah, it's. Uh, and I was very happy for him to see um, his project with Porsche come to fruition, at least on his end, winning the Super Bowl of uh, North American racing, which is twenty four hours Daytona. And it was uh, it was great to see uh, uh, you know the drivers. I mean, Philippe Nasser was crying. Yeah, mm. I mean it's it's. It sounds like an easy thing to do, but um, there's a lot of drivers who have never won. Can you can you get me up to speed on the other classes, Porsches? So in GTT Pro, Porsche only had one car, which was the uh, so they're uh, they're either running the GT3R 
or the uh, 963, like the prototype. Mm. So it's only two types of Porsches running uh, right now. Difference between GTT Pro and GTD, which is GT Daytona is what that stands for, is the Pro, obviously, is all professional drivers, usually factory. Mm-hmm. Um, the GTT is a mixture of amateur and uh, professional. Um, but once again, same cars. So that's why you'll see sometimes GTD in front of GTD Pro because – they were either out driving them or yeah. uh, had better pit stops. Uh, but anyways, in GTT Pro, we came in second with the uh, AO Racing. Is that Rexy? That's uh, Rexy, yep, yep. the one that looks like a dinosaur. Uh, they were also running LMP2 car, um, which they called Spike, which looked like a dragon. Mm. Um, so uh, it's good to see teams having fun with their uh, deliveries. GTD, we didn't do so well. I think it was seventh place, maybe. Um, we did win the uh, Michelin Pilot Challenge. Uh, which was the day before on Friday, mm-hmm. um, and that was uh, one of the uh, drivers was Raleigh Dickinson who won the mm. uh, uh, Porsche Deluxe Career Cup Series yep. last year. Very young guy, uh, he's come to he came to our tent in Indianapolis to speak. Uh, very well spoken, definitely an upper comer. Uh, it's going to be fun to watch his uh, his development. Hopefully, he stays with Porsche the whole way. Um, and then I think in uh, Formula E, we also won uh, for the second time in a row. So. Good, it's good a very weekend. good weekend for Porsche yeah. Motorsports. Manny, did I read this wrong? Or I think one of the LMP2, one of the Orca drivers, was not just too young to drink, but actually too young to vote. 17 yes. years old? Oh, yeah. yeah. That yeah. was amazing. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. it's happened before where uh, um, they, they SCCA, I think, lets you get a, a race license, I think, at 15 for some, uh, for some of their classes. And um, I remember... Uh, this guy, this kid had run at uh, Daytona 24 hours. Excuse me, wanted to race at Sebring with PCA, and he couldn't because our rules say you got to be 18, and mm-hmm. I think he was 16. Mm-hmm. And I thought, that is so bizarre. He's running the 24 hours at Daytona, but he can't, he can't run, run a, uh, can't an amateur PCA race. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, that's, 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 that it's not the amazing. rule, but it, it does happen in uh, yeah. at motorsports. And I mean, these drivers, you know, being in carts and you know other open-wheel stuff, they've got more driving experience than most of us combined. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah. so you went, uh, you know, I was telling a bunch of my friends, Cars and Coffee, I said, we should plan on going next year. A lot of them have never, ever been to the 24 hours of Daytona. And I'm sure there's a lot of listeners here are probably wondering the same thing. Um, I think I've been about 15 times. I started going, I think, uh, 92 was my first race that I went to. Um, and it's changed so much. Uh, some things for the better, some things not so mm-hmm. uh, much uh, for uh, spectators. When I first started going... Hardly anybody went, which meant there wasn't a whole lot of security, which meant we could go anywhere, do anything. I remember on the on the banking, there was some fencing that laid right on top of the banking, hmm. where the cars would come out of the infield back out into the, and uh, there had one security guard that would run on the outside of uh, along the front street, and when he turned around on his little scooter, you had roughly about. 15 minutes before he came back around. <laughs> and, uh, of course, this is, I, was, I was in my mid-20s when yeah. we were doing this. But you could climb up and lay down like a, like you're laying down on a grill grate of a, yeah. of a Weber grill. And, and as the cars went underneath you. Oh, you're looking down. Yeah, on, you could oh. feel the wind and everything. And there was no security. Uh, obviously, that's, I'm sure, changed very much so now. <laughs> um, but, Probably um, frowned upon today. Yeah. But it is. Uh, with PCA, we, you know, when we first started going, it was a very loosely uh, organized PCA group. We would just ask around, where's PCA at? And there was the local region would have a little easy up tent. And, and it wasn't even um, parking. They were sold. We just decided we're going to park in this little parking lot, put up an easy easy up tent, and uh, we'd all hang out there as a base. Uh, now it's uh, the PCA tent is very cool, very mm-hmm. um so well, we have professionally done the signage and be- the- beautiful tent. Um, it's it's open to PCA members and and Porsche owners. We have big TVs hooked up to the uh, live feed. We have presentations. We have waters and snacks. Now I will answer the question that was asked many times. I think Manny gets this call too. Is people you know bring their Porsches to Daytona and they want to park in the corral? Uh, let me underline that PCA has nothing to do with issuing the 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 parking passes for the corral that is all done through um the track and unfortunately it is it is like a willy wonka ticket i mean the people that have access to those get first right of refusal so many of them of course you know 
buy it, use it themselves, but then some of them buy it and then either resell or give, give it to a friend. Yeah, you wouldn't want to give it up. Yeah, you don't so want to give it up. If you're you not wanna, going, yeah. you just buy it, like you said, resell it or, yep. or give it away, but that way you, you get the same uh, option the following year. You know where I car. parked? <laughs> I know where we used to park. Well, at the one time, you could actually park in the infield. We knew we couldn't park in the uh, yeah. Porsche Corral because you had to have a Porsche. There was no way they would let you in day meeting security guards. Yeah. Uh, but there was always parking around the infield. But I don't think you can even get a pass before. No, Your four-day ticket automatically included a no, parking sir. pass. But uh, the last couple of times, it was just uh So we parked across it. the street from the track at the now uh, closed J.C. Penney's parking lot. And we, we hooked wow. it. It wasn't too bad. Um, but they I, used to have shuttles at the NASCAR building. They would let you park, and you they would. I remember uh, Karen they, Cooper they, and I were well, waiting for a shuttle that came picked us up. They they probably do, but we got there at six thirty in the morning, so there's mm -hmm. no shuttles running at six thirty in the morning. Um, but I will tell you, yeah, I've I've been to probably probably eight or nine uh, events down there, and it it felt so packed. There was a lot, like you know those those long train shuttles, like they do at Disneyland mm -hmm. that they have there. Every time you saw one of those, they were completely oh, full. Yeah. There was there's not an empty seat. Um, manufacturers were there in droves. I, let me try to remember here. You definitely saw Hyundai. You saw uh, Ford Mustang GT3. You saw um, Corvette's always a big Corvette. Uh, yeah, I mean there's a, along the. What used to be kind of Vendor's Row, it's all manufacturers now. The sad part is Vendor's Row was like six, eight maybe vendors, and two of the vendors were actually IMSA and um, you know Daytona Track selling official merchandise. Well, we were talking about how much they charge PCA for the, for us to set up a tent there. Yeah. And for so a vendor, I, there's I no way you can make money out. off that. Yeah. It's just uh, yeah. way, way too expensive. But it was packed there were really and i even heard of people kind of getting around how to get a parking pass like people resorted to buying the um the camping passes <laughs> and then, even though they weren't planning to camp they bought the camping pass so that they could park inside and have a, a lot spots. of the camping is the same way where they sell it to people who bought it the year before so yeah. the um the motorhomes oh you know, there was, was a lot of motorhomes yeah uh, people were making use of the motorhomes they bought you know, during COVID. Was there <laughs> any other like uh, a record gate this year, right? And they said was, they were saying yeah. during the show that uh, it was a uh, record um, turnout for. Uh, yeah. Uh, so the uh, PCA has, a, I think, the best spot of any club uh, on turn four. Mm -hmm. We have not our own grandstand, but it's pretty much our own grandstand. Um, it's a great part of the track where the cars are racing uh, into this corner. Is there any? It uh, used to be the Ferrari Club. They used to have a little. Uh, parking lot and then the bmw club had a corral but the corral was separate from their tent correct correct so that's still the case bmw was still infield um but they were separate from their hospitality uh i saw on the outside of um the track there was like a lamborghini and i think mercedes um corral that were on the outside and you had to take shuttles in but this wasn't necessarily club or no, not club, not club. I think it was just the manufacturer had corrals. Because the amazing outside. thing about ours is it's run by volunteers. Do you know who was missing? That was noticeable that they were missing, and we love them at the folks at uh, Grassroots Motorsports. They usually have. Um, I wonder if next, they were also priced out. next next to the lake or uh -huh. whatever. Yeah. They used to have a pretty sizable. Really, actually, their tent That's was like bigger. Tim's backyard. Yeah, too. Yeah. Their, their, oh, their, yeah. their tent was bigger than ours usually, and parking probably about. Did you the see same. Tim or David? Um, I saw David, but I yeah. didn't get to ask him about, you know, why they weren't there. But uh, I don't know. It's um, There was stuff over there, so maybe, maybe it had to do with the fact that the movie stuff was there and they couldn't mm -hmm. set up a tent. I don't know, mm -hmm. but they were definitely missing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's definitely, uh, if you want to put it onto your uh, wish list, um, Porsche won't be doing factory racing forever. Uh, they've gone, they went for a long drought. So 03 was the last time they won, and that wasn't really a factory effort. That was a racer's group. I don't know if you remember. That was a blue GT3R. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think it was a 66 car. Um, and uh, that was the year of the – was that the first year of the Daytona prototypes? The prototypes were running, but they were all were breaking down. Hmm. And so Porsche and reliability in their production cars 
uh, came to light when suddenly the racer group regular production 911 was leading the race. So that was pretty uh, pretty awesome to see, and everyone was cheering them on because it was a production car against that. What I thought was really ugly prototypes that they had at the time. In 09, I think they some people consider it a Porsche win. I do. It was the um, Action Express. Um, Cayenne powered, uh, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, Daytona prototype, yeah, yep. which I think was the same year they were running another prototype that was the official entry, and that was a Ruby Tuesday car, right? That was running the uh, GT3R uh, engine. Um, uh, they converted to uh, to run to be able to run in this chassis, but I believe that broke down or had a lot of mechanical problems. And to me, what's memorable is watching uh, motorsports people hanging out by the Ruby Tuesday, Alex Joe Ruby Tuesday tent. And then as they realized that had no prayer of winning, they slowly migrate over to Action Express. <laughs> and I don't think they let Action Express run the car with the Porsche emblem on it. Oh. They let it on the head on the head uh, windshield, they let it run with the word Porsche, but not on the uh No Crest. No Crest. They had to do because they I think the client it had to do with the V eight. Well it, it was it was a V eight that was uh, warmed over by uh NASCAR style by some and NASCAR yeah, engine builders. It wasn't builders. a Porsche building this Cayenne. No, engine. no, no. no. It was it was, uh, sure. it was uh, they they uh, believe they took it to a legendary uh, NASCAR engine builder and he kind of uh, warmed up the engine, uh, but it was reliable and had the power. And once mm-hmm. again, they uh, they shone through and yeah, suddenly everything changed. Now it was a Porsche at the end. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but in the uh, listing of the official listing of uh, entries, 09 is uh, listed as. Um, as a Riley, not a uh, not a uh, chassis manufacturer, yeah, not, not a uh, Porsche. Mm-hmm. They look at 03 as their 18th win. This was their 19th win. So now they have Le Mans in the 24 hours as 19 wins as they seek their 20th win. Hopefully at Le Mans, uh, so I think they're going to have an uphill battle uh, because WEC rules are a little bit different than IMSA. I think IMSA has done a phenomenal job of uh, doing what NASCAR does, and that's keeping it exciting to the last lap, which this was. Um, this wasn't like a bunch of laps being led, and you can relax and say they're never going to catch up. Now, when they're second and a half with 15 minutes to go, that's nail biter. Yeah. So I didn't get to see it. I was in the car heading to the airport, but some people have mentioned to me that some some of the the, the video feed at the very end of the race, um, some people look surprised. Went, that went from was... two laps yes. to go. <laughs> well, I was looks. I was surprised. <laughs> yeah. I'm waiting for the white flag, uh-huh. and uh, all of a sudden, there's the checker flag, and even the announcer was a little bit taken aback. Really? Yeah. yeah. He even he said, "Oh, it's the checker flag is out. Porsches win." And you're looking, you go, "Wait a minute, there was no." So, this, so was there a white flag that was? Uh, so, according to the article, mistake, um, it was they issued. It was a. Uh, it, the race started later than it was supposed to, mm-hmm. and. Um, they, uh, I don't think they calculated correctly. There was miscommunication. So basically, they should have done one more lap. Mm. Whether that would have made a difference, who knows? Yeah. I, I mean, at that point, uh, Philippe Nasser had he pulled ahead. The, the yeah. Cadillac got caught in traffic. Yeah. He yeah. he had a comfortable lead, yeah. and yeah. Um, had they been nose to tail, that would have been a lot of people wondering what happened. But uh, so they they've I'm pretty sure the, cel- the celebrations didn't really start until they did one more lap. Well, you saw the right. uh, they they, little... they showed on the Penske pit, and everyone looked confused. <laughs> yeah, and I think they were waiting for truly. Yes, the race is Don't over. Don't let up yet. Don't let yeah, up yet. <laughs> they were very confused too, because usually you tell the driver, "Okay, one lap to go." Yeah, because yeah. there's, there's someone monitoring race control mm. and listening to what they're saying. So uh, yeah. it was confusing. Probably one of the more confusing ends to a major race since the 2016 Le Mans with the Toyota Gazoo Racing car basically ran out of yeah, juice in the last juice, lap. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking of the, was it Pele? Who, uh, in the Formula One race, he was supposed to throw to Shecker. Uh-huh. And, uh, the Brazilian Grand Prix. Was that the yeah, one where yeah, the yeah, winner goes yeah. by and he's still like standing there? Yeah. Oh, and no. then somebody tells him to uh, to uh, wave the check. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> the team knew they had won. Yeah. But he had, was the like pressure. a, a little pressure. bit... Uh, a little bit about taking it back that he was supposed to be waving the uh, checker flag, but so, main thing is they won. Yep. Everyone got their Rolexes, and there were no, happy. you know, like um, what do you yes. call it? No after infractions. After no infractions. After yeah, like race, last so. year, remember Meyer Shank got hit with the uh, uh, cheating uh, infraction mm-hmm. that kind of I think uh, put a little stain on their win. Or for walking while. Glenn for the nine six three. Yeah, with, uh, yeah, less than one oh. millimeter wear. Yeah, we lost far. that when we thought we had won <laughs> it. Um, so I, I was. 
cautiously watching, reading the uh, news to see if uh, anything popped up afterwards. But it was all, uh, it was all legit. And um, amongst all the racing, all the race fans, all the uh, manufacturers that were there, there was someone there trying to make a movie. Can you believe it? And and there was a lot of people complaining, but uh, like you and I spoke, I, I think it's great for the. Uh, for the hobby, uh-huh. uh, sports car racing is not the most popular thing out there, and anything that can expose it, even though the movie's about Formula One, um, I think it's going to be called Apex, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. And, and yes, so what uh, does Daytona Twenty Four have to do with Formula One? Well, that's that's um... <laughs> that's how he gets it shows him progressing, I guess. Exactly. Okay, okay. Yeah. Progressing. East Brad Pitt is what, like sixty years old. The movie shows him. <laughs> oh, wait, uh, uh, okay. All, all right, right, Rob. Here's the thing. Um, um, spoiler alert! Like, obviously, he's famous. He's got an amazing career. Uh, he's he's been blessed with a, amazing genes. Turns out, the dude's a good driver. Can you? He, oh, is he? There's oh, nothing awesome. left, left left for us mere mortals. Yeah. yeah. Turns yeah. out he's a the great guy driver. who literally does everything better oh, than you. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Nervous. Well, you know, fellow Missourian. Well, yeah, Brad Pitt yeah, goes yeah. from here. To like here in my book. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> and um, I did get a little bit of behind the scenes. I, I love how, you know, watching logistically how all of this happens. And uh, so I got to see some of, um, from a distance, the, the movie cars and uh, the car that was. But you were uh, taken into by Porsche. Yes. For instance, it wasn't like you were uh, sneaking into the correct, behind the scenes. Correct, correct, correct. I had some, yeah, I was very fortunate to see some some stuff up close. And I got to see one of the scenes where, um, you know, he, he did and they were they were filming it. And as Manny mentioned about security and stuff like that, even for me, I, I haven't I wasn't there in the early days of Daytona, but the security was legit. Like you weren't getting close to the pits without proper credentials. I did a little bit here, a little bit of a, you know, um, buzz where because they took up they took up a, a garage or two, it kind of shifted everybody. Mm-hmm. So I think people that are used to doing the same thing every year with, with regards to racing and stuff like that, it kind of threw people off. But I think as Manny said, this, from what I hear, this movie, uh, Jerry Bruckheimer, yes. the director, yeah. um, the amount of money that they're doing to create this movie, the expectation it will is what Top Gun did for Air Force, um, you know, like that kind of money, money uh, Bad Boys uh, movie money, um, you know, they're 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 seriously looking to make it legit, which is why they put a car in the race uh, with cameras, mm-hmm. and it's they're using yeah, the live thing, footage. Uh, like that car was entered. If that car had the, won in the YouTube video right now, we're watching that is not that car winning for real. Yeah, this is part of the movie. Right, the car did not win, uh, but in the movie it did. In the movie it did, and and the footage of it, you know, being in in traffic and such, uh, the the cameras uh, that are in there, uh, were, they had a race control room up on one of the suites where the director, he um, he could call the shots. Like all of that was wirelessly. Like I want camera shot front, rear, side to side. All of that was just yeah. done. Via I'm just thinking wireless. the director. All right, now slow down a little bit. Yeah, to get yeah. this shot, and then it's like, what, what is everyone else going to do? And uh, I, I wonder. I guess do. I said, <laughs> I guess it's not like the old days of John Frankenheimer and Grand Prix or even Le Mans. Uh, they probably got little cameras, and he said, no, no, these things had huge, yeah, like yeah. exoskeletons. And what's showing on YouTube now? I found a video where uh, they showed a car, and uh, yeah, it has. It looks like alignment racks. There it is uh, yeah. on the screen. It's that's not uh, what I thought. I thought for sure with the technology it would be much smaller cameras. Yeah. But I guess when you're shooting film, that's going to be on a big screen. You need uh, you need that sensor you need and you need that so, lens. Yeah, lens. Almost more importantly. And they're running that car at 180 miles an hour uh, when they were doing footage earlier in the week. So just imagine you have to design. You'll appreciate this, Damon, because you carry mm-hmm. the different rigs for PCA. Yep. Imagine designing a rig front and back that's got to be able to stay on the car and be stable at 180 and pass, miles. And pass into inspection. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah true. And the, the car that was in the race obviously didn't have the rig on the outside, um, but all the weight. Yeah, our camera gear is small, but the camera gear that movie people use, it's still like 
a lot of equipment and they actually had to get signed off like the weight of that equipment could be used for the weight that the car needed you know that's a legitimate yeah. that's right motorsports yeah. which is a yeah. legitimate race yeah. team absolutely yeah. i mean can we now say that the studios have determined that racing films are commercially viable i mean the last 10 years we've had we've had rush yeah. ford versus ferrari ferrari now this i mean yeah. in the previous 20 years you know i don't know that i could name days of thunder days of thunder yeah. you know herbie yeah. <laughs> fully loaded. <laughs> yeah, but no, I seriously though, I think it's a good sign. I mean, clearly these people are obviously in the business of making money. The studios are very careful about what they green light and now we've got this, you know, this this rash of of racing films over the last 10 years. I think it's great. The quality mm-hmm. racing films, not the, what was it? Right. So was just alone one about Indy cars. It was just horrendous. Oh, um, um driven. Um, driven is that what it's all? Pretty yeah. sure. So this is um yeah, kudos that I Yeah. Would love to see this movie turn out to be legit. And mm-hmm. uh, and now and I'll well hold done. my uh, uh, opinions on racing movies until I see um, what is it? Enzo? Is that what it's called? No, the new Ferrari. The movie. new for, uh, Ferrari. I think you're going to be disappointed with that one because everybody that I've talked to is was very disappointed. With oh, that really? Movie. Well, it was, it was really it's not a slow. racing movie. Yeah. It was a it was a biopic. It, yeah. it, well, it was a biopic of one year. One year, oh, one yeah. very trying year in Enzo Ferrari's life. I mean, the yeah. racing was almost peripheral to it. Um, Which is fine by me because in every single racing movie I've seen, if anything's going to ruin it for me, it's the racing. Right. Well, I, I mean, <laughs> the racing was really good. The cars were were recreations, but they're very accurate. Mm-hmm. But the scene of the the Millimilia crash was, I thought, just gratuitously. I was not. I was yeah. not prepared for that level of uh, gore. Right. Right. I mean, it was. <laughs> yeah. You know, imagine like the the beginning of Saving Private Ryan, like five notches up. I Ooh, mean, yeah, was, yeah, really? no. yeah. We were in the theater. Was, I was like, wow. Oh. I did not see that coming. It was horrific. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah. Spoiler <laughs> well, I mean, it's not. It's yeah. you know, it's like that's the, just fair warning. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's you know, it was in real life. It was horrific, like the fifty-five yeah. uh, Levant crash. Mm-hmm. But I mean. Just the recreation of it was 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 really horrible. Oh yeah, wow! But uh, to me, the the uh, we could do a whole show on this. But I hold um, John Frankenheimer's '66 movie Grand Prix as like the highest for me mm. for realism. It is very good. Yeah, uh, and and there was no CGI back then, no. so he actually got Formula Three cars and they outfitted them to make them look like Formula One. But they were using what I think is really cool about that movie is. They had all these F1 drivers that you read about. Right. Who were in the they, background. They, yeah, they were making some extra money. Yeah. Right. Like and, Graham yeah. Hill, yeah. Jock and Rin. Yeah, they're Jimmy all the, Clark. Yeah, they were uh, all in the background. Yeah, yeah it's uh, um, Joe Bonnier. It's, it's a whole list yeah. of who's who of Formula One. Right. Unfortunately, a lot of them left us because of, uh, of racing accidents. Virtually but, all of them. Yeah, I, I, I love seeing that. So I hold that as like the ultimate racing movie. Right. And like Brad Pitt, James Garner really could drive, could drive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah that's what i heard so yeah it's uh i don't think it hurts at all the sport to have someone like brad pitt doing a movie like this like rob said it, yeah. it kind of like shows the world what uh why we love sports car racing yeah. yeah yeah i'm excited for it yeah and to be able to capture that correctly and utilize real cars real racers um you know patrick long is uh, tied in with this movie and um, yeah, tell us what Patrick Long you heard. He... Yeah, so Patrick, I, you know, I, I believe he is uh, Brad's coach. So who better to yes. have as a coach, right? And right. Uh, um, I think he has a, a role in the movie as well. I saw him running around, kind of behind the scenes. The, the, we talk about this a lot of times. Again, you know, getting to go to Daytona is great. Unfortunately, I don't really spend much time racing, but I do form a lot of relationships. And um, this is a perfect example of, you know, we couldn't really talk about today the stuff that I learned about the movie because there's, you know, public stuff and and stuff that's to come. Um, But the people that I met, they certainly want to be a part of PCA and telling and promoting this movie when it's done. But until then, we kind of got an open invitation to talk about the past projects um that they've done and you know they were they were very open to say that they're huge porsche fans you know pca fans you know and and they are are willing to come uh in the near future even before this movie comes out is to maybe talk about their past projects with um bad boys uh transformers um top gun and how they source the cars and you know what how they decide all that and then he 
he threw me one that I wasn't expecting. He's like, yeah, we can talk about uh, the Millennium Falcon. And I was, I was thinking like how like Porsche like inspired designs and stuff like that. Uh, Did you say you listened to the podcast because you heard you say something wrong about the I said something, Transformers? I said something <laughs> wrong about the Transformers. I said he's because I said I can't believe you're actually using uh, three six turbos like legit three six turbos and bashing up and da 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 da. Uh, and I think that's what he's referring to. But I, I I challenged him. I said, well, I would love for you to come on the podcast or come to a PCA event and set us straight. And um, so hopefully we'll get that yeah. soon. But back to the Millennium Falcon. He said, you know, yeah, we've got so many cool stories. Like, did you know, and for those of you that are Star Wars fans, you'll probably want to Google and search. Did you know the seats in the Millennium Falcon are 911 sports seats? What? What? I what? Don't well, not, not, not directly. They modified them. But they yeah, did. you can see from the back. Yeah. Really? And we never know, but now if you pull, of course, when I told Manny this, immediately he went to Google, and uh, you can see. I the, went down this deep dive where <laughs> I found out that, uh, and I guess they can't be any geekier than us, so we can't make fun of them, yeah. uh, but for the Star Wars uh, uh, enthusiasts, there's guys who make uh, the Millennium Falcon cockpit at home. Oh, right? yeah, absolutely. Replica, that is... Which I thought to myself... Yeah, I could see myself doing that if I wasn't married and I had the room. <laughs> that is super geeky, but let's face it, so what cool. they're geeky about is geekier than what we're geeky about. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, come on, Star anyway, Wars. They, 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 perspective. So they yeah. use Cobra, uh, who, who makes aftermarket uh, race seats. Uh, they use those seats to make these um, Millennium Falcons. Cobra or Corbo? Uh, Cobra, not Cobra. Corbo. Cobra. Cobra. Yeah. Like the snake yeah. yeah um but someone figured out because in the forums uh you showed me someone said that uh, they brought up a picture of a 911 sports scene they're like this one looks very close they, i don't know they, did sure they get rid of the backrest release latch <laughs> is that so still they there? so yeah. the, what they did was they um they uh, they attached the, the 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 back bolster and the bottom so it looks like a one piece kind of side okay and then they rewrapped it so when they rewrapped it you lost the uh the little pull handle thing but you can clearly see the shape of uh, the classic nine eleven high back. I'm sure wow. back then they did not have an idea there would be this thing called the internet, <laughs> and people could bring in uh, multiple images. Or there would be people like in. us being so geeked out by the fact that's a nine eleven, you know, sports seat. Cool, yeah, but huh? I, I like the idea of having a millennium so Given who George Lucas is and everything else, you know. Yeah, no, he, the the person I was with, he was just like, yeah, we're we're big fans and. Um, I was like, man, I would love to host you guys, and maybe if, if there's an opportunity for us to go to Lucas Films and do something, and uh, he was open to it, so we'll see. We'll wow, see. yeah, yeah. Lucas Films I, is on the street there, where Jason Camisa and every icons or not icons, the uh, Lucas Valley Road. Oh, mm -hmm. it's named I, you after. You know, yeah. who knew that the Insider Podcast could be so educational? I had no idea. There you go. All right. <laughs> All right, let's um let's go into videos. Uh, you dropped one recently, fifty and sixtieth Club Coop. Yep, uh, I drove uh, both of those, and I realized that I forgot to put it in the e brake last night. So if you didn't see it in e brake, it'll be in next week's e brake. But it's been on on uh, our YouTube channel now for um five days, four or five days, and. That car is so longer clean. as you're listening to this, but yes, it's um, Alex and Gail Galloway oh, man. Um, own these two cars, and I they bought the 50th Club Coupe used, but they bought the 60th new, mm. and um, I was out there, filmed a bunch of reviews in October, and we're now just getting around to finishing them off. This is the last review from that time, and uh, both of those cars are amazing. They're both... I believe they're both Concor winners. I'm pretty. I know that the 50th has I almost, to be. I, I have a feeling anything that the Galloways um, own is Concor. Yeah. Yeah. Alex, <laughs> hats off to anybody <laughs> yeah. who prepares a car with a sand beige interior for a Concor. Yeah, I, I bet. I bet. Uh, they're, <laughs> well, their their Panamera is even lighter. Yeah, yeah. Than the sand Panamera beige. is like don't wear jeans and yeah, it careful is. about rubbing your foot. I on think the, we should give Alex console, Damon's so. Cayman and say, if you really want to see if you can win. Bring this up to Concourse standards. Oh, that is a that is a I don't tall, know if that's, tall. Order. I wouldn't want that. That's, <laughs> that's a video a I would order. I would totally watch. <laughs> mainly then, then to see, I, I mean, the seats out mainly like, to see Alex's. Uh, that would be a great I mean, multi-part series. Alex shake their start, head or they actually start, do it. I would watch that video. Twitching. He would start twitching when he sees. His, <laughs> I know. I, I mean, as long as you don't touch all the performance stuff, like oh. just Concourse, I'm I'm okay with losing. So, yeah. <laughs> but if you want to clean it. 
I, I want to cool see that, that video. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so I mean, it'd be like a six hour video. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the main the main thing about the two club coupes, and I'm going to bring this back to cars that your your average Porsche enthusiast could probably stretch at some point in their life and buy is um, it's basically a 997 dot one Carrera S, but with the power kit, which power kit, came yeah. out a little bit like that was the first car with the power kit, mm -hmm. and then yep. it was made as an option later. And then um, the 911 GTS Club Coupe is a Carrera GTS. It was also one of the early 991.1 Carrera GTSs. Um, you drive both of those cars, and like they're just one generation apart, you know, back to back. And I just really love the newer car. It's just more fun to get in and just drive and bang off shifts, and, and you can tell that... You don't have to, I mean, you still have to work for, I'm sure, the performance, like when you're really on the ragged edge, but it just feels more friendly. Their, si their 60th is also manual? No, it's PK. Oh, okay. Yeah, which is fine. I would I would honestly, what it came down to is 991s just feel a lot newer and more modern than 997s. Mm -hmm. And if you drive them back to back, you might think you're a 997 person, you know, like I thought I was. But if you gave me the choice of the, a Carrera S or GTS versus Carrera GTS of... You know, the two different generations, I'd probably go with the, the 991. Drive a 997 Sport Classic. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I've driven a lot of 997s, GT2 RSs, 3 RS 3.8s, 4.0s, Carrera Ss. I've driven a lot of 997s. And 991s, they're a little, to me, a little bit more fun. Wow. But both very, wow. very good cars. Yeah. Uh, we'll take this off. I'll yeah. take any of them, to be honest with you. Yeah. But, uh, fair, fair warning, I've learned that I like newer cars more than older cars in general. A 997 is kind of like the oldest I would actually want to own. Maybe a 996. Fair point. But, fair so point. When well, that, I mean, that, that car debuted, the uh, 997 Club Coupe. It was at Hershey at the parade that I co-chaired. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was on the EC at the same time. And back then, the EC didn't share all the information within EC. And so uh, even though I was on the EC, I wasn't privy to what was going to be the whole procedure of debuting this car, or the, even the car was going to be debuted at Parade. Can you believe that? You didn't know? No. <laughs> Back oh then, the gosh. EC was much different than the way EC operates now. Anyways. Um, EC as in the executive council. Executive, yeah. yeah. The people yeah. who run the club. Yeah. Um, but so it was uh, a car underneath the, all these, uh, underneath this gigantic cover, and it actually looked, everyone thought it was the Panamera. Because there was talk of a four door sedan. Oh, they, so they disguised the shape. And they disguised the shape, and everyone thought for sure this is the new Panamera. And mm -hmm. I thought so too. The way it was, uh, uh, what we found out was uh, there was all balloons over top of it, and that's mm -hmm. why it looked so big. So at the uh, welcome party, they, um, I think Hans Peter Porsche, and uh, I can't remember from uh, Porsche who, who uh, was there, but they lifted it up. All these balloons flew up in the air, and it was the uh, Club Coupe. And uh, I think they, um, I, I thought they did a lottery back then to buy it too, but it was just like it was the 60th. There was mm -hmm. a lot more people interested in buying it than there was allocations. Someone, someone got one yeah. for free. And they gave away one and they kept one. They kept number one. And I think that's Cliff out of New York, right? Yeah, Cliff Rosen, Rosenberg. Like yeah, Rosen, something yeah. like that. He still, I think, still has it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but we gave one away. Porsche has number one uh, down in Atlanta. I've been trying to shake the tree. Because that's one car that just gets moved around down at PCNA mm -hmm. in Atlanta. I was like, that car really should be at home with PCA. Oh, we, yeah. really sh we really should be the caretakers of that car. Yeah. Didn't yeah. one of them wind up in, 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 uh, in an episode of House of Cards? That is the 991. Yeah. yeah the that 60. was actually a friend of mine, Terrence. Uh, yeah. They called up and said they were looking for a blue. Vu told me I got in a little bit a of blue. trouble because of that one. Yeah. He that said, was, I mean, that was probably like six years ago. They said they're like, looking for a blue 911. Yeah. And Vu said it'd be great if we could get it a club coupe. Yeah. yeah. Terrence had just taken delivery of his. And I said, hey, how would you like to make your car famous? Yeah. yeah. And at the time, they said they're not going to drive it. They're going to put it yeah. on a, a, a trailer. Yeah. Yeah. And tow it around. So and so he got to go down there and they were supposed to only use it for one day and I think they used it for a week. Yeah. So he was, was getting paid the whole time. Yeah, like Nev Campbell's character drove it and she got in it and, you know, drove it perfectly. It turns out she was a nine eleven owner, if I remember right. Well she uh he had to adjust something and uh she he said, Do you wanna I, I gotta get down on the floor she was sitting in the car mm -hmm. and do you want to get out of the car and i can do it and she was like no you can do it i'll sit here yeah so he had to put his head down 
Oh, oh my God. <laughs> in the, in I the did foot, not see that awkward, coming, Manny. In the footwell area. Right. And uh, <laughs> she, say, he said he, she was a very nice person. Yeah. But uh, they never drove the car, and they uh, uh, to- they towed it all around uh, Baltimore, which was supposed to be Washington mm. and uh, D.C., and yeah, made it into House of Cards. So yeah. yeah. So so. But, hey, but somebody said that she was familiar with the because she had had been or was currently a nine eleven. It was a nine nine six because the car gets destroyed at the end. I think either her character dies or something like that. But um, they used a nine nine six. They painted. Uh, in Club Blau to wreck the car. So oftentimes yeah. we get requests here for cars to be at, you know, um, store openings, weddings, whatever, whatever. And we, you know, if it's legit, we try to help out. And in this case, you know, they were looking for a blue 911. And I'm thinking, oh, that would be great if we could showcase the yeah. Club Coupe, right, in a movie or in a TV show. And then we knew some local people. So we, we arranged all that and it worked out. However, I got like... I want to say th- there was some concern that that happened without Portia knowing about it. And I could totally understand now. I didn't think about it before is because when Porsches are used in movies or TV shows, um, they are very sensitive to how that Porsche is being used, like who the character is. Because unfortunately, if you watch a lot of movies, you realize, you know, the mean person or the, the, the cheating uh, spouse or something like that drives away angrily in a Porsche and that's not what they're trying to do. Right. (laughs) Or, or, or how they plan to use the car. And so they, they need a lot more details. And honestly, I was just happy that we would be in the the show. I didn't really ask any details and thankfully it didn't matter because they used it in a proper manner, but uh, okay. Now I get it. You should be a little bit more selective. Unauthorized product placement. Yeah. 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 But uh, all is good in the end. Yeah. Yep, and a couple more videos uh, just to kind of recap. Um, on the last podcast, we were filming or recording on a Tuesday, and we hadn't yet released last week's video, which was Monty Racing um, with Nikki Rader and Carl Leinzing. So if you haven't checked that out, you can get a sort of a brief history of Monty Racing and what they're up to now, and also um, how you, as a North American, can buy Monty parts at a dealer and get them installed. Um, and also just a deep dive into a Club Sport uh, 25. Um, so check that out. Cool video. Um, the one we released yesterday on uh, Tuesday was the 996 GT3 RS versus 996 GT3 Cup, um, which there's a lot. The, the powertrain is very, very similar. Um, and they're both 911, same generation. Uh, one's a race car, one's a street car. And we end up. Uh, having Bob Miller, uh, who has a shop and services both these cars, um, tell us about both what the differences are and why you, how and why you might get a GT3 RS, or if you love driving on track, why a GT3 Cup actually might be the better buy and oh. more value for mm-hmm. you. Um, then he drives them, so if he you drives wanna... a Cup car on the street. Yeah, <laughs> which yeah, I thought was awesome. And everything you know, um, <laughs> you hear really all short. the transmission whine, yeah. you yeah. hear everything that you would in a factory race car yeah yeah so quick drive just to give you i mean you can immediately tell this is if you're watching on youtube the gt3 rs right now that's a loud car right but nothing it's compared not to loud a, compared to, compared a, to a race car yeah so very cool what yeah. a yeah i think uh the 996 fans will be pretty happy with yeah, that video i think so as well and it's almost what the so right now i think he said that uh to get it epa tested for show and display is I think they had $90,000 into into that, mm-hmm. and now it's good to be driven on the street. Mm. Um, it's really close to the, what, two years now? A year and a half until 25 years for, for those cars. Mm-hmm. So, Or I guess this year, because it's an 04 GT3, right? So you can start importing those yeah. and not have to do the EPA stuff. To import it's easy. It's the money to pay for it. That's hard. or is it twenty or twenty five? It's, 20, it's 25 twenty five years. It's twenty five. Yeah, it's 25. twenty in Maryland to get historic tags. Right. Twenty five right. to import something. So right. We've got a, a few more years. With our, that. our friends in Canada have a fifteen year rule. Oh. We're all envious of. That's mm. the exchange yeah. rate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let's uh, talking about Monty. We will have Monty 
at uh, Tech Tactics East, February 24th and 25th, as well as other uh, amazing topics for you to sit through. Again, Saturday is sold out, but we still have some room on Sunday, so hopefully you'll join us there. I know Manny and I will be there. Damon, are you going to come up or... I'm probably going to come up to hang out. Um, I'm yeah. not going to be there officially to work. So this will be the first time, I guess, yeah. with Tech Tactics that, uh, you know, I'll be talking to people looking for stories yeah. um, to tell. But I'm going to try and, uh, and that's why I'm going up. But I'm going to try and enjoy it as well. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Works Reunion, Amelia Island, March 1st. Registration is open. Again, uh, the judge slots are sold out, but we still have uh, Corral openings uh so make sure you join us there by the time uh you hear this episode we have opened porsche parade phase one getting ready to head to birmingham alabama june 9th through 15th and uh phase one is just housing mm -hmm. um so if you uh like the gentleman who commented and said uh he lives in birmingham but he's not a PCA member yet. Can he go? And he has a Porsche. I said, join PCA. You'll regret it. Mm. Once you realize what parade it is, how big it is, and you'll say, oh, my God, it was in my backyard and I didn't go. Um, even if it's not in your backyard, it's a great event uh, to attend. And even if you're, if you're a member but you're not registered, I think you can get into hospitality and, uh, and go to um, the Concours and maybe some other stuff. Absolutely. Uh Interestingly enough, our youngest our youngest national event, Treffen at Sea, was brought up many a times uh, when I was at Daytona, not only from members that went to the past ones and just wanted to reiterate that they had a great time, um, but some of our partners are thinking about uh, coming on board and joining us for Treffen at Sea Alaska, which is July 28th through August 4th. Uh, pe people are now booking. We are over 800 PCA members heading to alaska so should, 800 800 yeah. Well, yeah that's more than last week and if we get to we're going to be like a, a medium-sized pc region yeah on the sea absolutely yeah. right. on the sea, on the sea. this time including me and a plus one because i was supposed to go on the last one and that went poof i don't, I don't know what he's talking about yeah. i was gonna say wait a minute he's gone before i am yeah i don't know what he's talking about and i i don't even want to know i'm gonna be fun plus, if i go he plus one plus one hmm Let's not get into the relationship discussion here. Uh, but I will get into if you were watching Daytona and you got excited about racing, but you can't do it yourself uh, with uh, getting yourself to Daytona, then maybe just head over to simracing.com. Uh, check out the sim racing videos, how to get started and race with your peers within PCA. And they have all different skill levels. You can check that out. Uh, of course, we have newly introduced merchandise, merch, on the PCA web store for PCA Insider. We have t-shirts, Insider uh, tea, uh, Insider uh, mugs, as well as water bottles. Again, if you want a PCA Insider decal, which many of our folks down at Daytona were pretty happy to receive, you can just send an email over to podcast at PCA.org and we'll send you a couple. Anything else before we wrap up this yeah, 100th I wanted, to, episode. I wanted to answer this one comment I just saw come up uh, from last week's podcast. Why is the company name Montai pronounced Montai versus what I hear pronounced here in the U.S. as Mantai? So I mm. wondered this too. Uh, back at Laguna Seca when uh, Nikki Rader uh, came to the, um, to the tent to do a presentation, one of the first things I asked him was, how do you pronounce the name, the correct name? And he said Montai. Yep. Used to be, I, I used to call it Manthi for a long time. And how so. do you know this? Because you asked the person, Olaf Montai. Yeah, well, I asked Montai. him in German. I said, How do you pronounce it? Yeah. And he said, Montai. Just like it's Taikan, not Taikan. Yeah. Taikan. And same thing. Why Porsche? Yep. So, <laughs> you ask the family, that's how they pronounce it. We name. pronounce it that way because we're pronouncing it correctly. Exactly. Yep. All right, folks. Well, thank you for listening. If you aren't currently a PCA member and own a Porsche, what are you waiting for? Grab your VIN and head over to PCA.org and we'll get you set up. If you're looking for that special Porsche for your driveway, we have the test drive program. Again, you can uh, enroll there at PCA.org. Remember to follow our podcast Instagram page for behind-the-scenes photos, videos, 
Porsche Club Insider, all one word. You can always send us a note at podcast at PCA.org. And again, please give us a, a like if you're watching on uh, YouTube. Be sure to comment if you can on YouTube or on your podcast platform. And of course, subscribe. We really do appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations on the 100th episode of PCA Insider. I'm very proud to be a part of it, and I hope you're enjoying it. And I appreciate all of you that listen and spread the word and uh, let us continue this path of success. Until next time, stay safe and we'll catch you down the road.